This is Seven National News and in our top story. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of the Dubai Executive Council, has issued decision number 19 of 2013, approving the organisational structure of a number of departments at the Dubai Health Authority. The decision includes the Governance and Internal Audit Department, Customer Services and Corporate Excellence Departments at the DHA. The Dubai Crown Prince also issued decision number 20 of 2013, approving the organisational structure of the Administrative Services Department of the Corporate Administrative Support Services at the Roads and Transport Authority. His Highness Sheikh Saud bin Saqeh al Kazmi, the Supreme Council member and ruler of Ras al Khaimah, has ordered the release of 210 prisoners on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan. The pardon covers inmates in correctional institutions in Ras al Khaimah who have so far served different jail terms who will be deported. The gesture aims to give freed prisoners another chance to start a new life and also ease the suffering of their families. The UAE Red Crescent Authority has distributed Ramadan ration cards to registered families at its branch in the Al Marcania area in Al Ain. Salem Al Ris Al Amri, the RCA director for the Al Ain branch, said that the office, in cooperation with the official entities, private foundations and companies, donors, philanthropists of both Emirati and expat residents, has completed preparations to implement a host of humanitarian programs and charitable activities associated with the Ramadan campaign. He added that the RCA branch in Alain has secured 750 thousand dirhams for the Ramadan ration, which is to be distributed among beneficiaries in advance, and that 1,953 families will benefit from the Ramadan ration project. And additionally, the team overseeing the implementation of the UA's project to help Pakistan have announced an initiative to distribute 2,400 tonnes of food among 30,000 families in camps worth over 1.5 million US dollars for people displaced by floods and military operations in Pakistan. The move comes to mark the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. And with Ramadan fast approaching, the municipality has launched a campaign to collect leftover food for families in need under the Hivs Al Niam project. The move also aims to help prevent excessive food waste in both households and hotels. And according to officials, consuming less and donating the excess is the best way to avoid wasting food, which also saves the environment. The municipality is collaborating with a number of charities for collections and officials stated that all charities registered with the Department of Islamic Affairs and Charitable Activities can participate. In Ramadan 2011, 17,021 people received food from the project. The Dubai Health Authority opened a new medical fitness center in Karama today, which is triple the capacity of the Satwa Medical Fitness Center. The clinic provides express fitness services and can accommodate up to 2,000 customers per day. It covers 20,000 square feet and features a VIP lounge, a kid's play area and state-of-the-art medical facilities. The centre will be open from Sundays to Thursdays from 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Officials also revealed that the Al Satwa Medical Fitness Centre, one of the oldest in the Emirate, has been temporarily closed for refurbishment. Due to the growth in Dubai and you know, the geographical uh, distances and uh, you know, to, to make the life easier for the, our customers, there's many of these uh, type centers will come around uh, Dubai, Jabal Ali onward. Uh, so the customers don't need you know, to travel long distances to, for, uh, to receive this type of service. And in the same place, they can find you know, multi-services. And under one umbrella. Through that, you know, they can, uh, you know, finish a lot of uh, the services required, screening, whatever. And in the meantime, finish other part of their life, uh, daily life uh, services.
this center uh, forms like you know a first step into our society and we tried our best to make this step or this window you know you know in the best uh, customer driven customer service and the colors and the uh, reception and the uh, you know the, the different part of the of the service that they can uh, receive here uh, Al Karama Medical Center is exclusively for for express services, four hours, 24 hours, and 48, 48 hours uh, clients. Uh, we have all services available in this location. We have the typing centers, we have the delivery services, we have a coffee shop, we have a restaurant, we have segregated uh, male female male areas from the female areas. We have a playground for kids. We have two major processing labs, so we make sure that the, the, the results of the blood are available on the spot. We do not keep the client delayed for uh, more than his expected uh, time of service. And um, we are also expanding. We have expanding uh, projects. We have the one uh, coming up in Uptown uh, Mardif. Uh, plus, we are shifting the present location in Jabal Ali to a new, uh, bigger branch, which can accommodate like uh, 500 clients per day. Public transport will run on a different timetable time table during the holy month of Ramadan, as announced by the Road and Transport Authority. From Saturday to Wednesday, the Dubai Metro will run until midnight, with the red line starting at 5.30am and the green line beginning at 5.50am. On Thursdays, both lines will run until 1am, while the services on Fridays will be shortened to run from 1pm until 1am. Paid parking times are also being changed to coincide with shorter working hours, where fees will be collected from 8am until 1pm and again from 7pm until midnight, Saturday through to Thursday. In TCOM, Dubai Media City, Dubai Internet City and Knowledge Village. Working hours for parking zones will be 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. The development of the UAE's future athletes remains a priority following the success of the school Olympics last year. More than 85,000 students aged between 7 and 14 nationwide participated in the inaugural event, which identified talent across six major sporting disciplines. These include three mandatory sports made up of swimming, athletics and gymnastics, while shooting, archery and fencing are optional. According to the UAE's National Olympic Committee, this is an important step towards achieving the country's goal of producing Emirati Olympians for the next decade. To realise this goal, they have a 10-year plan that aims to instil in them the value of sports at an early age, identify those with potential and raise awareness among families. We're expecting a very bright, talented athletes in uh, 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 2022 which uh, we are very, we hopefully and we are uh, very positive that we get some medals at that time. There's a study actually where found that children with better sport performance, they perform better in school. So we need really to get that campaign among the mothers and fathers and I mean, whole family just to make them understand the importance of family uh, of a sport. Sorry, not only just for sake to go and win medals, even to have it as a lifestyle. So with having such um, uh, implementing the, the principles and values of the uh, Olympic movement towards this and getting the, 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 the access of, of, of everyone to, to, to practice a sport, this is what we really need to get into the Emirati families especially. Procter & Gamble says they recognise the importance of developing the country's youth through sports. Through their partnership with the UAE NOC, they aim to contribute further through their products and various campaigns that seek out the identification and progress of young athletes as well as the community. September 2012, this is when His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum announced this uh, new school Olympics programs. And, and since then, you know, a lot of activities have been happening and we've been taking quite a role in this. And we're very excited now to see there's going to be a much more potential to scout new talents here in the UAE that will be in the future Olympics uh, for years to come. And finally, looking to other news now, the biggest ever World Junior Swimming Championships are to be staged in Dubai this August. And organisers are expecting to see another surge in the growth of swimming and aquatic sports in the UAE. 
The event will be the eighth major international aquatic event to be held at the Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Sports Complex since its construction in December 2010. Experts say that in order to inspire and motivate athletes in any sport, it is vital that they are exposed to an international level of competition, either as a spectator or as a competitor. They added that it is also an education process for local coaches who are given the chance to interact with international coaches and improve their skills. The competition will be held from the 26th to the 31st of August, with a record 93 nations sending a total of 905 athletes to Dubai, almost double the size of any previous World Junior Championships.